some help and some answers uh, as always and so yeah we look forward to spending this day together and tune into that and um, so practical application for me uh, in my life it's been like a prayer since childhood uh, to kind of get into the practical application and to kind of steer my mind towards God and to open my mind to spirit and um, it's like a, I see thoughts as distractions and it's almost like we are gathering our thoughts we're collecting them like a bouquet of flowers and we can give that bouquet over to spirit uh, because they are all over the place usually and distracting so we need this mind training um, and we need to practically apply uh, A Course in Miracles ideas and pointers so that we can actually have an open mind to the message and because we won't hear it when it's when the thoughts are too scattered and all over the place. So we need this mind training. And um, yeah, there was another piece to that I wanted to say. Yeah, it will come. <laughs> But uh, so uh, for me, it's it's felt like this world coming to this world is like being dropped into a maze where you know I don't understand all the roadways and where, where to go and all the turns and being lost in a maze, almost like those you know that you um, you know those uh, little boards that you yeah. play with a, a ball yeah. and you're like this yeah, yeah. ball that, and sometimes you just drop you know down into some black hole. <laughs> and you need to get back again, and it's it's tricky. It's like the balancing act, and um, and, and you do need constantly change. <laughs> Pardon? And the walls constantly. The change. walls change. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's and lot, you. It's a lot bigger than this. <laughs> <laughs> when, you're, when you're the little little ball, you don't see the big picture. You know, mm. you you may just see the wall in front of you, and sometimes there may be a know straightforward but then there is a hole that you didn't see so so we do need a guide to to get to the the goal to get to peace of mind and I love uh, the course teaching because the goal is not on the timeline the goal is peace of mind and it's beyond the timeline mm -hmm. like the timeline is more like a stretch like this but I see it more vertical like, and we are traveling through beliefs mm -hmm. to come to the goal of peace of mind. And you can see it maybe this way or inward or deep or, you know, however you, however it works for you. But it's not a goal in the future because that is a very, very tiring journey. And even course students get into the problem with that that the goal of enlightenment is in the future it's on the timeline and that is a hopeless journey that the ego loves the ego loves keeping you on that on the timeline so so this is very powerful to come together in this purpose of finding out the blocks here and now so that we can come to peace of mind and that we can actually do it together is really cool. We have some exercises that will help to look at blocks. Um, and so for me, I think it started when I was like five years old. I just started to pray to God. I, I, wanted, um, I wanted to know God <laughs> early on, but the maze was um, difficult and I was in this maze probably until I was 30, and, uh, but all the time praying and 
wanting the connection with the Holy Spirit. And I grew up Christian, so I, I knew the Holy Spirit. I knew, you know, I didn't know the Holy Spirit, but I was very curious. What is this Holy Spirit that is the communication link to God? You know, if there is a communication link to God, I want to, I certainly want to know. I certainly want to know how to use that. We can put a chair in there, maybe. Yeah. Or here. Next to Yeah, so to, to get in touch with the communication link and to let the communication link help us to see the blocks, you know, to, to the spirit and to peace of mind. It's, for me, it became the, the one and only thing I wanted to spend my time on. And so it is still. So, um, and I began, I got the course in 2005, so it did great. And uh, I have, I studied it very intensely in the beginning because it was so, so amazing and it just really spoke to me. And nowadays I don't read it. I Periodically I do, um, but as of, yeah, right now I don't really study it or read it. But I know it comes back. It keeps you know, coming back. So, um, and we are we are using to get we are we are into practical application all the time. And practical application is about forgiveness, you know, forgiveness of of beliefs. Um, so in our marriage, we. We use it, we communicate, and we look at our own mind. We look at where we want to project, and you know, we're willing to see it and take it back. And, um, yeah. And it, it's. Um, yeah, Course in Miracles is a course in relationship in the sense that it keeps talking about your brother. It keeps talking about how you see your brother, or of course your sister. Um, and that's the key to your own power of your own mind, because how you see your brother or your sister shows you your own beliefs. Uh, and that's the gateway peace of mind to see your beliefs and transcend them. Mm -hmm. It's not really to work it out interpersonally. That doesn't work. You need to go within and work it with the Holy Spirit and be guided in your relationships. And if you have a relationship in purpose, a friendship or a partner or a marriage partner where you can talk about what comes up in your own mind and talk about even what you project or things you want to heal, that's a, that's a huge blessing, but most people don't have that, and you do, you still have relationships, and you see your beliefs in them, and you may even clash in certain relationships, and that's where you need to go to the Holy Spirit with it. Yeah, um, I think most of you probably know that Jenny and I have uh, been involved with a living in community amongst mighty companions where we have consciously chosen to be together for just one purpose. And we are there to heal our mind. Um, and it involves...
involves really looking at our inspirations and using our skills in ways that would serve what we feel in our heart to be a very high, if not the highest, purpose we can in, in this time. One of those was we were given the collaborative effort to put this book together. Um, we just, for years, consistently and continually feel David Hoffmeister is a very clear channel and who's lived over 30 years practicing A Course in Miracles. And so, yeah, we had quite a bit of fun and constant inspiration. One of the things that was so cool is you could... I couldn't even imagine this at, at like some job. But over two and a half years, every time something would come in for the book, and at times 15 hours a day, you know, or longer, um, Sundays, they're just, we don't have a time structure around Sundays or this or this and that. And we, it's not like we did take breaks when the spirit was like rest, you know, but, but yeah, there were, every Sunday we were, you know, deeply involved in putting this book together and working with at one time there were about 40 people that we had scrambling looking through thousands of transcripts and putting them together sending them to us and we would you know go through and because we couldn't literally go through thousands of transcripts and see how everything would come together so they were categorized in groups and themes and stuff and and so there was some you know, ghost writing and, you know, had stitched things together. But what's cool about it is we're able to find what was spoken 20 years previously with my, what might have been spoken a few months before we had found the material and we're able to weave this really rich um, uh, conversation about the themes and practically applying Course in Miracles and um, to uh, everyday life, and pulled as many as we could of David's, you know, pure examples of living, um, yeah, in college and sort of struggling with questions and conflicts, personal conflicts, and bringing them together uh, so that it would be illustrated. You know, the miracle could be illustrated where we could find them. Um, yeah, so. This has been, yeah, living in community um, is, yeah, is very much um, using all communications and collaborations for uh, forgiveness and, and just clear communication, um, which is really important. Um, the spirit uh, loves clarity. Um, uh, and uh, I remember even in just 12-step work, um, there was this emerging theme that, that was recognized like among you know addiction, addiction and 12 step recovery and it was that the ego loves vagueness <laughs> or you know you could even say you know like you know just yeah. if it's vague then then the ego could come in there and say you know you grab that addiction or whatever, you know, because, you know, and then you're like blindsided by it or something like that, but in other much more subtle ways. But, um, yeah, so we've found many, many, many ways to use, yeah, purpose and collaboration and communication in ways that really help just heal the mind um, and, and come to forgiveness because it's hard to even in situations, really knowing the whole situation and knowing everyone's thoughts, you know, sometimes that's the key to forgiveness. You know, it's like, oh, okay, you know, I really had no idea in my perception. I was like, I didn't know what was going on, you know, and then forgiveness can just come in much more quickly. Um, so, yeah, there's... Um, Maybe we can get into the can, book more later and uh, I think yeah. And then you take questions? We do take we questions. Do. <laughs> we do. We, yeah, we felt yeah. we had some yeah. themes yeah. and yeah. some things we wanted to just talk about. At any time, or are you about. waiting for the answer? Actually, we no. You, if you have um, a pressing question that seems really relevant to getting some well, clarity. You said the spirit loves clarity, so why isn't Course in Miracles written clearly? 
Why it actually it? is. specific um, experience yeah. with it? Like you feel like when you read it, you don't feel like it speaks clearly to you? Well, when we've been going through the text, yeah, you can read a paragraph and go, huh? And, um, and someone will say, oh, it means, and they'll say it in one simple sentence that, well, of course, mm -hmm. but You know what? That's it, how it works, though. It wants you to think of it yourself? Well, it's not to conclude that the course is unclear, first of all. But second of all, spirit will send us answers when we need them and when our mind is open to them. So in your experience, your mighty companion that is clarifying it for you is what spirit is using for you. You see what I mean? So, so it's, it's, it is such a walk of trust, and I've seen it so much in my own life that, you know, the answers come in, in, in ways that I couldn't figure out, but they do come. And when I hang in there, even with the course, and with, you know, the ideas, and practice them, practical application, my mind does get clear, you know, but it takes things that I couldn't, I, it wasn't me that was saying how it would come to me. I needed to trust that it would come to me in ways that spirit orchestrated, such as through other people or through whatever means um, came along. So signs. Signs, a lot of signs, a lot of, of music or something someone says and more and more and more that happens until you know nowadays it happens all the time it's like an experience of you know my thoughts and my ideas are not just in my head but they are you know everywhere spirits actually had me read other books or portions of other books and i go oh okay i get that mm -hmm. and then when i go back and read the section in our text, I go, oh, I now I really get yeah. it. That at different times that happened. Yeah. Because I was totally where you are, yeah. and now I see things a lot more clear, or not that yeah. it's. Well, no, that. yeah, you can read a Buddhism book, and it's like, whoa. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Yes. Yeah. And this is the purpose for this book. Mm -hmm. that we, you know, and we have lived, we, we have lived, and we are living with David Hoffmeister. So we have this channel of practical knowledge on how to how yeah, to apply the course. Halfway yeah. Does it help you? <laughs> um parts of it. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I find that as I've I've already been through the course, done all my underlining and as I go back and read sections, I'll even read things that I underlined the first time through. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they reoccur to me. So just the revisiting of it from having spent two years going through and then going back, there's a, another level of readiness to receive whatever was written in there. Um, and that, for me, I find just keeps changing. And I can receive certain sections much more readily than the first time I went through, even though it made sense enough at the time for me to underline it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even a year and later, hitting it again, I'm like, oh yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. You yeah. get in a deeper yeah. level. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. just a. Yeah. Well, different things <coughs> resonate with you Correct. at different yeah. times. Yeah. And so I guess for me, the, the word that would come to mind is it's just always about readiness. And that is always either 
moving this way or going deeper, however yeah. you think of. Mm -hmm. So that's it. The word readiness mm -hmm. came to me too. And, and we, we can allow ourselves to relax and even say, okay, I must not be ready, but I must trust that the answers come to me, you know, the way where I'm at right now. And I can be open to that. Um, yeah, so, so it's important to be very gentle in this and not force ourselves to read the course, uh, but do it from inspiration, you know, and maybe just one sentence is enough you know, per day or you know, per week, or, and you just let that percolate. Would you equate readiness with willingness? No, it's different. But no. you can have readiness but not willingness, or you can have willingness but not readiness. Mm. But if you have both, <laughs> you know, you you're know. doing, that's a great, then it's going to be a speed up. And, and if you have willingness but not readiness, you can cultivate your readiness. You can pray for your readiness. You can open up to readiness. If you have readiness but not willingness, I urge you to pray a lot. <laughs> <because> <laughs> otherwise, it's going to be a lot of... It's going to be a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot of mm -hmm. um, ego interferences. Um, yeah. And for me, I, where I'm at right now, the, the m one important thing is an experience. And I'm only here for an experience of the spirit. I'm not so interested in anything else. And um, here, here, even here today. Um, so I'm available for for you guys and for what spirit wants me and us to share here. And. Maybe just some some guidelines and ground rules is helpful to share. Just um, we don't want it to become like a discussion group where you because you do that I think in your course group and and it's great you know to share ideas. But please turn to us with any kind of ideas or questions um, that feels helpful. know a lot about us and about David and <laughs> <laughs> so not everyone okay so some background I think is helpful um, like I said for me it started in 2005 when I got the course in 2006 I met David Hofmeister in, in a conference in Sweden and a few months later um, my mind was ready to just let go of the familiar things that I was surrounding myself with in Sweden. Even my son, uh, a job, uh, psychology studies, and I, I let that go, um, and, but not without pain, <laughs> not without questions, <coughs> and, um, and I was I was visited by two light beings uh, when I was struggling with taking this leap, leap of faith. And those light beings answered my questions and they told me to go, go for it. And um, after that, I was very empowered. I felt very encouraged to go to America and go to a Transcendental Meditation Center in Iowa, Fairfield, Iowa, to do Transcendental Meditation. That was my plan, and I thought I was gonna, that was gonna enlighten me, because meditation was one of the things that 
worked for me. And I liked meditating. I liked going deep within, coming to an experience. And I think meditation is a great path, but I think A Course in Miracles is a faster path. And I was there only for three weeks, and then Spirit guided me to David Hofmeister. And I started a mind training curriculum <laughs> with him, designed by the Holy Spirit. Um, first, it brought me to a very light experience, a very high experience of not seeing the world, uh, not perceiving with my senses at all. And my mind was merged with David's mind, and it was this light, this light. And then in that light, there was so profound trust that I decided to invite any doubts, any kind of darkness. Uh, I invited Jenny, the structure of this self-concept, to come up to awareness so that I could heal and let go of the parts that are not serving, <laughs> of the parts that are resistant to God. And it did. It came up. And it was the deepest, darkest fear I've ever experienced. And it lasted for almost a year. And it was fear, it was confusion, it was delusion, delu feeling disillusionment, feeling lost to the extent that I had to kind of walk myself through my daily experience. Just said, take one step now, go one step at a time. And that's how confused I was for, for almost a year. And then, and I was, I left David during that time. I left the Peace House, I was back in Sweden. Seemingly, this body was back in Sweden. Um, was in some kind of dark thing. Uh, that's how it looked to, to face the darkness for me. And then I got back to David and I started traveling with him and I started really listening to him. Spirit was like, you better listen <laughs> to him because you need some help. <laughs> and so, and he helped me and it was very fast. It's like two years more or less of transformation. And then he said, now you're going to go out and extend. So then I started to lead gatherings. And, and then I got married in 2015. Greg and I met in 2012. We had a very slow start of our relationship. And we worked through a lot of beliefs, facing a lot. Because it's hard to, hard to be together. <laughs> it's hard to be in a marriage or be in a very intimate relationship with someone, you, uh, you need to be ready for that. And I had spent years getting ready for that. I, um, I had to face a lot of ego, a lot of fear of loneliness, uh, a lot of desire for a partner, uh, a lot of ego stuff before I was ready to be in a relationship. And then when I was in a relationship, I had to face that again the desire to be together a lot, the desire to talk a lot, the desire, because, because he was dealing with his beliefs and he wasn't always wanting to be intimate with me. And, you know, so, so I had to face the loneliness again and it's very deep. You know, so, but uh, the relationship itself is like a pathway and now we are more or less ready to use it in a more helpful way to extend to others and more like the holy relationship that the Course talks about. But it's taken a lot and I see many people are actually, they need to be single for a period. It's like first you're in, you're married or you're, in, you're together with someone you know, because that's how you condition. We condition to try to find a partner, and it's very strong for most of us. And then you start to wake up, get the course, and and you may divorce. You may feel like you need space, and that can go on for years. Um, it did go on for me for for several years, 
And then I was ready for a relationship in a new way, not in the way of finding someone to complete me or finding the other half, you know, feeling half, and, but finding someone to use uh, forgiveness and purpose and heal together. So that's a whole different purpose. And um, yeah, so, so that's been very, very deep and very healing. And, and for years also there was a clinging, even in this relationship, it was the fear of loss. And, and now it's more, okay, whatever spirit wants, whatever is helpful, um, yeah, are we gonna stay together or not? We don't know, and we don't even focus on that question. And this is one of the keys too that you all can remember. We don't need to focus on the question or on the issue in form. As long as we just keep redirecting and open our minds to spirit and open our minds to the inner listening and the forgiveness process, then we, we get the answers. And the, the trick is, the ego's trick is we get always get hooked in the form and we want to figure out, figure out the form. But the thing is, the form is actually showing up. It's given to us when we keep remembering the purpose of forgiveness. Um, and we can really trust that. And it really works. <laughs> it really works. And it, it is scary. It can be a little scary to start to take some steps, you know, and start to, like we used to say, to take the leap the leap of faith like I did in 2006. I took this huge leap of leaving things behind and everything. Um, but even the smaller steps or smaller changes can take some courage. And, and, um, but it's very encouraging and very empowering to do it. It's, it's safe. Um, we're here to, mm. yeah share that and you may have situations in your life that come to mind where you need to take a little leap of faith and just yeah I'm just here to cheer you on so yeah. even with um, th yeah the practical application uh, it came up last weekend in Daytona the no compromise Salvation is no compromise of any kind. And this means that we are invited to not do compromise in our minds from moment to moment, from moment to moment, to keep so alert, to keep our minds so on the spirit, be single, let thine eye be single. Um, and that's that's the invitation to no compromise. And Jesus says to us in the Course, you're worthy of constant effort. Because to our deceived mind, it does take effort to do this mind training. Because the mind is a little bit lazy and it loves to distract. Mm -hmm. So to in the moment to have this little bit of effort to, to be alert for spirit from moment to moment, and this, mean, this is so practical. It means that you are guided in form, in your daily interactions. When you're driving your car, you are so alert that you, you, know, you listen for guidance and you don't believe in the external world um, because the external world wants to cave in on us all the time, unless we are alert for it to not do that, <laughs> like this, you know, I have this space for my mind to, to be with the spirit. And it's very, very important for our peace of mind to allow that. So I want to take traffic as, as an example. Uh, and we can take anything really, but we are used to be victims. We are used to mm -hmm. let the world rule our life like things happen that you know makes us 
feel like we are powerless. Yeah. And it will happen that way all the time, unless we <coughs> stay in this empowered place with the Holy Spirit. For example, in the traffic, when you drive a car, if you stay alert with the Holy Spirit, you will, and it's, it's a precision, you actually will need to, to turn right or left the moment spirit tells you to, the moment when you, okay, it's, it's open there now. But if you're in the victim mentality, you will expect so much cars and, you know, you will expect things to, to rule you to the extent that you have to wait a lot and you're like, ah, oh, so much traffic today, you know. <laughs> but when you're alert and on with the spirit, there will be an opening okay, I can go now, you know. Mm. And um, if that's not your experience, just pray for that. And use, use if you have to wait a lot in traffic, just use it to pray and meditate and just, you know, watch your mind, watch that littleness that is ruling. <coughs> um, so it's, um, and in communications, like with, families or friends that's another example where it's easy to get lost in um, the day rule your mind and your day and your life because they have needs and they you know have demands even dogs you know and cats or mm -hmm. children or, you know <laughs> but that's also your opportunity to to see where you can do this this thing in your mind of making space, <coughs> no compromise, no compromise. I can speak uh, from spirit and I can, like if my one goal is to follow the Holy Spirit, it must be available in those situations, right? So it can't be that you're a victim to circumstances and situations and people and animals whatever so it's very very cool to uh, to do this training and this practice and yeah question. I don't I need clarification on that like let's I would like to give a simple example that's not a problem at all but just a simple example. sure so when you're saying no compromise and to stay with the spirit and the direction that the spirit wants does that mean that you don't get up and let the dog out? <laughs> Does that mean that you don't answer someone's question? You, you, you see what I mean? Like, do you go inside of yourself and yeah. listen to spirit? Or do you yeah. try to just remember that spirit is there and you get up and let the dog out? Right. Do, see how I don't understand? Like, I'm missing yeah. the, like, be a little more literal. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you do the thing with spirit first. Okay. That's what you need to do. And then, you know, that's your mind training. And it might be that you feel, no, you don't feel guided to go and let the dog out. And it may show up later why, you know. But it's like a step-by-step -step practice because you still believe in the external world. So you need to, um, you need to take action. So if Sometimes. you don't listen to spirit and there are consequences, yeah, you just pay the consequences. Yeah, okay. There's, there is no, you know, you can't get a, away from the ego's consequences when you're, you know, yeah. it's, but but that's also only an experience, you know, it's, so the ego's consequences is an experience of unpeace of. This is, you know, I'm not feeling at ease. Mm. Um, so that's the ego's consequence. So that's why it's important to follow the spirit and to, and, it, and you may say, but I don't know how to follow the spirit. I don't hear the spirit, but you only need to be willing to follow the spirit. <laughs> you can open the mind to be willing, you know, and that's all we need because he's going to take it from there. So in the practical day-to-day -day, uh, experience, the primary 
primary practice is to watch your mind and to watch your thoughts. You know, that's, that's what you do first and foremost with everything. And you, you will see your beliefs. See, I believe that the dog needs to go out. I believe that the dog needs food. I believe those things, you know, and, and I'm gonna be gentle with myself. I'm gonna feed my dog. I'm gonna let the dog out and, you know, and so you do, you're mind training with your dog that way. It's a relationship. So the prayer then, before you initiate any action is, show me how to do this peacefully. Well, it's more like, I give this over to you. I believe right. this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, my highest goal is peace of mind. Mm -hmm. It's not to feed the dog. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> so. Yeah. Show me how to maintain my peace. Yeah. Right. And how to walk peacefully yeah. with you in this. Yeah. Whatever this mm -hmm. is. Yeah. And when we hand over all our relationships, mm -hmm. or all our doings, our kids, our parents, our partners, circumstances, when we learn to hand it over to spirit, it's going to be used in a glorious way because we are worthy of that. And that's the only thing we're worthy of. And we're not going to feel content. We're not going to feel settled until we learn to do that. We're going to feel like there are demands on us and they, they need something from us, very common. You know, responsibility is a heavy belief. I have responsibility for other people or other things, and that can be such a strong self-concept that we even, we may have um, a job or an occupation where we can be so responsible all the time. But it's not our highest, we're not going to feel content with it, but when we, while we take our steps, it can be used when we, ha when we learn to hand it over. So the mind training also is to do, to do this handover from moment to moment. From moment to moment, I hand over my perception. I hand over my current perception. I see I notice my current perception and I hand it over. That's the, that's the mind training. And that in that you will see your beliefs, you will see your thoughts and your emotions uh, <coughs> and to be in touch with it first and foremost because it's almost, you know, in the world we are like machines. We're not even in touch with thoughts. It's like it's sleepwalking. So first it is to become aware of what I think and what I believe and what I do mechanically, you know, what I think I have to do because my parents taught me, the world taught me to brush my teeth every morning, or, you know, my, the world taught me <laughs> to do those rituals <laughs> because otherwise, you know, you're going to get sick, you're going to get something, some, so there's all those false, false learnings that we, you know, spirit wants to relieve us from all of that uh, to be with him. Well, how do you know the difference between when you're <clears throat> being led by the spirit or not being led? And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, you feel, you see that someone has a need and you want to do something kind for the person. Um, it's part of my Christian upbringing, the Ten Commandments. So I follow one of the Ten Commandments, and I want to do it for the person, and I do it, and I do it joyfully. What if I consult the Spirit first, and then I don't do the kind thing for the person that would bring me that joy? Yeah. Like, yeah. So there's a conflict there. Like Let me know what happens. If you're taking yeah. time yeah. to go inside and say, Spirit, do you really, should I help this bleeding <laughs> child get off the highway? Like, you know, well, that's let's an exaggeration, let's, but, but, you know, of good. course my training and my upbringing yeah. and my brainwashing is, of course you help the bleeding child get off the highway. Well, but to me, the, the consulting the spirit thing seems a little impractical. It seems a little hard for me to apply. I'm not very evolved in this, I would 
say. But right, right, right. There's well, some let's... things that seem right to do. Yeah. And there's some things that well, seem wrong. Well, let's look at it. Let's do it now. Okay. Yeah. Let's think of a situation okay. where you feel you would normally act. You would help. You would rush in and help. Okay. Even we, yeah, say the bleeding child. Mm -hmm. Okay, you would just rush in and help because right. you're taught to do that. Right. It's your conditioning, and that's right. That's Christian. That's yeah. the right well, thing to yeah, do. It is what it is. Yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. So, so, uh, what would happen with your mind? And this is just you know. <laughs> so, the course is teaching us that thoughts and what is happening in the world are the same. But the deceived mind doesn't believe that. So we can play with this right now. Okay. We can, this is like a movie. And you're there, you see a bleeding child. You know, we just imagine this happening. And, and I tell you to pause. Just take a second. What happens in your mind? Are you going to get enraged? Are you going to feel some guilt? What's going to happen? Probably I'm going to feel anxious. Anxious, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. Because I'm not doing what I believe is the yeah. compassionate thing to do. Yeah. I'm very compassionate. Right. So. Right. Okay. So that so that's good. You see a lot of things here. You see your self concept. I am very compassionate. Mm -hmm. I am a helping person. Mm -hmm. I'm kind. You know, I take care of things and people. Mm -hmm. And this is what it's about. To yeah. see those those different things. Because it's like, that's actually the machine. Mm -hmm. Like that's actually the habitual, it's the, the self-concept. So, so you want to see that. <laughs> and you want to feel the guilt and the an anxiety, you know, for a moment. Mm -hmm. Just to, to be able to transcend that. Because peace of mind can't be there when there is anxiety. And your goal is to have peace of mind, right? Well, I would have the anxiety if I didn't do it. Right. Is that what we both understand? Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so this is this is very very good. You know, this is this is as if it happens right now. Because when we imagine something, it's the same as if it's happening in the world. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And now you can't rush and help the child because there is no child in this room that is right. bleeding, you know. So, so we can we can really work with it. And this is this is the mind change. This is what I have done with so many situations. I was in a marriage before, and I was terrified that he would um, have an affair, that he would cheat on me. That was one one of my worst fears. And the way I did my mind training, I acted it out in my mind. I took this worst, mm. you know, image. I was like, okay, I'm going to face this belief. Okay. And my next step was to love and bless the woman that I was terrified that he was going to be with. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to love her. I'm going to forgive this belief, you know. So that's, that's how I did it, and it worked. I have healed, you know, so much through um, watching movies in my mind mm -hmm. and watching real movies too, just, just like that. And so, in the, and and I have been driving my car, and I've seen where like an accident happened, and I ask for guidance: should I stop? And I heard no. You need to carry on. You have, you know, you have a mission. So it's not because. You don't want to blindly uh, follow your instincts or your conditioning. Okay. That, so there is an invitation from the spirit to relax a bit. Okay. Yeah. okay. So it's kind of like um, little baby steps. So mm -hmm. the very first thing is for us to at least just stop for a second. Yeah. And be aware of what our <coughs> beliefs are. Yeah. In relation to that, so you pointed out self-concept. Yeah. <coughs> I believe there's a someone needs me. Yeah. And then that's kind of where, it, for me, that's where I would just get stuck and be like, I gotta go. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that then you know just recognize, okay, well you're just not quite 
there yet. You're not on that step, on that ladder. Yeah. And because it just seems bizarre to say, well, I, my belief that there's a, another being is so hard to, and then we talk about practical application. Yeah. So to say there's, there's no one else mm -hmm. outside of me, it such seems a little beyond my ability to mm -hmm. comprehend or mm -hmm. yes. know. But well, that's why that's why the lessons. But I'm aware of that, right? Okay. The yeah, the lessons of the course are so helpful because it says you you may not understand them, you may not believe in them, but you do them, you practice, and the same you know with your daily practice, you just you just practice, um, and in the beginning you may just do it when you do the lesson, you know, and forget about it for the rest of the day, but you can do it as much or as little as you want. <laughs> You can you can practice that there is nobody outside of you. In the beginning, in the peace house, when I was with David, I put earplugs in my ears because I I really felt distracted. Mm -hmm. People talking around me, and they were living their lives, and I so wanted to focus. So for a few weeks, I put earplugs in every day to not hear them. <laughs> And so it helped me, but but that was me, and it, you know you may not, but it it is it works to to do this practice. It really works. It's so especially when you have this urge of fulfilling the need outside of you, that, you know the perceived responsibility. If you even give yourself five minutes, I'm not going to buy into it right now. I may you know, do it in five minutes. But now I'm gonna take five minutes and watch my mind with this, you know, and or 10 minutes or an hour, you know, whatever you feel comfortable in your practice. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there are certain situations where that would be easier. That's yes. what I was just gonna Some say. Some situations where the bleeding child isn't gonna wait an hour, yeah. but, you know, my relationship or my beliefs without my sister work with that exactly yeah, yeah so that's just part of the thing yeah right so yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah and the, and the beliefs are strong mm -hmm. and and they have been conditioned for so long so it's very it can be a bit hard to get out of it like yeah. for example if you have a mother that you call every Tuesday at 6 p.m. or something like that and she expects it and now you, one day you decide, no, I'm going to do my mind training. I'm not going to, I don't want to call her right now. I don't feel like it. <laughs> and and you sit with your thoughts and your feelings and, you know, one hour goes, two hours goes. And then she calls you, says, why didn't you call me? Or, you know, you may get reflections like that. And then you take that situation and work again with, your sp with spirit and your mind training and your guilt. Mm -hmm. uh, if you pick up the phone or not, you know, you, it's like every moment you have the opportunity to. It's a beautiful up. example. Of, I mean, ego is screaming. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Ego is absolutely screaming right yeah. now. Yeah. What's wrong mm -hmm. with you? Yeah. Get your ass in gear. Get yeah. that done or yeah. whatever, right? And so it, right there, you yeah. can sit right there with that. Yeah. Okay. That was a good question. Yeah. What was the other thing you need besides willingness? Readiness. Readiness. Yeah. Readiness. Yeah. Yeah. This is and readiness. Perhaps there's a, is this what we're talking about, equate with the phrase, let go and let God? Yeah. Totally. Yeah, we are. I'm very open to questions. We're very open to questions. Yeah. You explained things really well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> can you give us another example of a belief that you can know what you did with it? Just because that was really good about mm. the infidelity and thinking of the other woman. Just something right. else. Right. That's another example. Yeah. That was good. Do you have an 
income? slipped out of my mind for a moment there, Robbie. Yeah. yeah. Did you have I'm from what you're talking about doing as far as like playing these possible scenarios over my head. I used to do that a lot. I would pra I would rehearse and practice speeches I was gonna give in response to what people may or may not do. And I, I, I found that it kept me from being in the moment. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It kept me from accepting what it is like putting earplugs in so I don't hear what people are saying. Mm -hmm. It's re me resisting that which is, instead right. of me embracing it. Right. You see it as an obstacle to being at peace, instead of me seeing it as an opportunity to practice being at peace. Yes. Instead of being well. Yeah, so for me, it was important for me to do that for a couple of weeks at that time. Now I don't do that. I don't, I never put earplugs, not even in airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I do, but usually I don't anymore. Um, just for that reason, you know. Uh, is something we go through at the time. Right? Yeah, it was important at the time because I had let the world rule me. You know, I had been this um, victim or just at the mercy of every day and what was happening. And I just didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I agree with you. One part of the mind training is to show up, you know, and, and speak our mind and and watch our mind and yeah, be present. And when we need to also step back, be uncompromising then too. And go into our room and meditate or you know, take time off, take a walk. Or, so it's like, it is from moment to moment to be, it's like uh, the Christ child, there's a lesson that talks about the little child in you that needs your protection. You know, you need to show up for the Christ child and give it a space that it needs, and you know, to, mm -hmm. to do this. Uh, yeah, a lot of times um, I'm kind of I, I I think to myself, wow, I just treated myself kind of like as kind as I would be to a child or to a friend I love. That's great. Like, <laughs> you know, being um, getting away from that harsh judgment on myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. I often, Beautiful. I often find myself um, thinking about what it would be like to wear a blindfold. Yeah. For a long, for an extended period of yeah. time. Because when we sit and meditate, and, and I close my eyes, um, it's so liberating mm -hmm. not to see a world, a physical world, and mm -hmm. physical. Bodies yeah. separately, yeah. and then just to start talking to people because you're speaking to a disembodied, whatever you want to call it, spirit consciousness. And when I'm done meditating and I open my eyes, I'm always like, "Wow, it's like it's through a world here. It's, it's, it's like you, it's yeah. like it goes away. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, damn, it's still here. Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's good. It's a good example. It's the same as with me and the earplugs. Like, to give yourself that space. And the more you do that, you will actually feel um, more and more detached. Which is really weird because, you know, blindness, loss of sight, physical sight, is like a scary thing for the ego. Mm -hmm. I think for most people, you know, certainly for my ego. And, and I have some vision loss, so it's like, wow, isn't that interesting that that's where my mind is wanting to go? Right. Mm -hmm. that's, there is the belief that there is safety <coughs> in having physical sight or hearing. You know, there is safety in understanding the world. Or at least that's a belief. Yeah. yeah, convenience, yeah. yeah. Freedom. So for you then, there's an invitation to face that belief. Imagine yourself blind and, you know, face the fear of that. Uh, there are some movies that can be helpful to watch. Such at as? Fir at First Sight, I think, is a movie. At First Sight. The Gina movie. At First Sight? Yeah. Yeah. 
just because I was thinking, do you suppose if you go with what your heart tells you to do, that that might be spirit telling you to do that? Yeah. As opposed to, well, okay, because I do, I do think that that happens to me. Yeah. And I do think that I do it without thinking about what anybody thinks of me or Mm -hmm. any consequences at all. It's, Mm -hmm. to me, it's, the thing that has to be done. It's yeah. what you do. Yeah. Not out of obligation. Right. But it's just out of passion. Out inspiration. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. yeah. Okay. And I gave you that lame example of the dog, but you know, there are there are more way more important things that happen in my mm-hmm. life where I feel mm-hmm. that I need to or not. Mm-hmm. go to mm-hmm. someone and Yeah. I think know, spontaneity help. and yeah. inspiration mm-hmm. super helpful. You know, to, to allow for for that to follow those inspiration and right. while you do the mind training and the spirit will take you to a higher and higher place, you know, when when you do this mind training. So it will even expand you more and you will feel you know, this following your heart will be even more important and yeah. it will become more and more intuitive. And then I can also see on the opposite side of that, there are times when you have to stop and say, am I doing this because I feel obligated? Am I, don't I need to protect myself a little bit or don't I need to be kind to myself right now? Mm-hmm. I'm not, mm-hmm. not, like, not saying yes to everybody all the time, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I need some help with, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you, you first. Um, understanding or getting clear on am I really not willing or ready? So yesterday the lesson I was working with was 27. I rest in God. And it was perfect. Because I was at our new house painting and getting it ready. That lesson asks you every hour at the top of the hour to spend five minutes. And it seemed as if at minute 55 of every hour, I was prepared to tear the walls down in that house in rage. And the the unwillingness to forgive myself for allowing myself to get upset is what I was questioning and then it goes to so what is it that I don't want and do I not want it even though I say I do want it am I currently lying to myself about every morning before I even like eyes open it's My goal today is the same as it was yesterday, Holy Spirit. It's to hear you and experience the peace of God. So I would get into my five minutes and I would just, I was like, I want to rage right now. And then I would tell myself, but that's not really what I want. So which was it? That's where I'm having, I don't know what the truth is. Yeah. And I need help with that. Yeah. So there is a fear of the spirit in the mind. And that's why the rage. And to me, that's the way through. Right? That lesson didn't just happen by accident mm-hmm. yesterday. I know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah was to show you constantly, to bring you back, yeah. you know, faster, to bring you back faster. Does that answer? I don't know. Mm-hmm. 
Do you want to join me in this? Uh, like, no, in that. Yeah, I want to. I want. You know. I don't want this rage. Yeah. I know that it's it comes from a place of believing a self about myself that isn't me. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. That's cool. And there's nothing to understand about the rage. There is nothing with it that you need. So you did the right thing. <laughs> you you had the rage and then you were so consistent doing the lessons and you saw it. I don't want this rage and I opened my mind to spirit. And it, that's the simplicity. But it was every hour. Yeah. So it's I don't know my advances from my retreats then. Uh -huh. no. <laughs> because when I got home, right, I was still like I, my uh -huh. wife even asked me, What's what's wrong? Mm. And I was like, Well, in my mind I chose to be miserable all day. Mm. Like I achieved everything at the I got the whole house painted. Mm. That's what I went there to do. Mm. I should have come home feeling like yeah. <laughs> God, you know, I, I reached the well, goal, you know, but I didn't do it peacefully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, and it was all my choice to not be peaceful. Well, you, yeah, and you have given your mind over to awakening, and you have said to Spirit, I want to wake up. Mm -hmm. And so yesterday, I think you gave yourself some spaciousness. It sounds like you were just just you there in the house mm -hmm. and you actually had the space to let the rage up so that you could deal with it and hand it over so I think it's a bigger picture I think that it was just that you were ready to face that mm -hmm. that's my hope yeah that's beautiful yeah rage is a very it's good it's good but it's it's um you have to let yourself feel it yeah you have to let the rage happen yeah. it's the ego's anger at god there is no other rage and it's totally. it's projected it can mm -hmm. you know it, it can be childhood trauma it can be i've been unfairly treated you know that is that is there in our memories and it's triggering the rage and it's good to allow it up no matter what it seems to you know it seems to be the cause um, but underneath that cause is the bigger cause the, the ego's rage at God mm -hmm. and the ego's fear of God or seeming fear of God fear of love so it's very good to be in touch do you think forgiveness it. is also forgiving God or is it maybe It's forgiving our image of God, for sure. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I was going to ask you say about detachment, mm -hmm. but yet also one in form no. so me as a person I'm not one with you as a person so you do detach from form because form is just thought forms so you're not detaching from your life force or God or no. Holy Spirit you, whatever you can name, label you can it. <laughs> it's impossible to detach from that because that is your Life. Essence and everyone's yeah. essence. Yeah, yeah. But you t you detach from ego. Ah, uh -huh. okay. That's what you were saying. Mm. Yeah. Otherwise, it would just be nihilism. Mm -hmm. That's 
that's why the distractions is spoiled around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why it takes vi vigilance. Vigilance and willingness. Yeah. But it pays off. It really pays off. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I can't say it enough about the practical application and the facing our specific beliefs because they do limit us and that's what we have to work with that will save you time if you go right at those and we are very happy I feel to invite you to because it's, it's safe we're a very small group here so it's very safe to bring up specifics here and we can work with it together if anybody is sitting with something, um, it would be fine to bring it up here. Mm -hmm. And you will have opportunities to work in small in dyads too. And I'm open that we have an expression session too, but we, we just see how the day unfolds. But if you're ready to expose something or express something, um, here that you want to look That's deeper at. I had a dream last night um, that I was um, telling people about um, my love life for the past <laughs> <laughs> 10 years and uh, what a disaster <laughs> it's been. And, um, and then I got into a car and I was driving and I went up this hill I went down and I lost control of the car and I smashed into the side of a hill and then uh, my car filled with snow <laughs> and, um, mm. and I just was like Siri what 911 you know <laughs> and then I woke up and it was like it was a nightmare feeling like mm -hmm. wow I'm, I'm awake that's not real and I was happy um, it's hard to tell that but um, the snow is like purification and I just so today my prayer is that I just completely purify my thoughts about relationships just thank you The dreams can be so helpful. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a triumph actually because I was driving. Mm -hmm. And for many years, I have dreams where I'm in a car and someone else is driving yeah. and we lose control. Yeah. Or the, the brakes don't work or something right. like that. Or I'm on a boat and I don't know where the captain is and yeah. I'm adrift. Yeah. It's almost like you took all those, you said, disastrous relationships. <coughs> And that's what, and and you driving the car, I think it's like a symbol of the self concept. Like you mm -hmm. took it all into the snow and the purification. Call for help. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's beautiful. How wild that it was snow rather than like smoke. Yeah, I yeah. 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 so so was surprised. You went right to smoke and you said snow. Yeah. Yeah. It was like like just wild. filled the car with snow. <laughs> yeah. Like I felt like, oh my gosh, well, the snow's coming down. Can I find my phone? I was like, Siri. <laughs> yeah. But snow is a symbol of purification, spiritual purification in dreams. So I have a dialogue with my higher self in my dreams. So this is a long conversation. Yeah. That I think I knew because I was coming here today. You know, I had intentions for today. I think I had that dream. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, like, the ego is very threatened when you're stepping towards your, your more spiritual side. You're coming here today to talk about the Course in Miracles and mm -hmm. to expand your awareness. The ego is afraid of that. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, there are a lot of people who've had very frightening experiences just because your ego feels threatened and you want to share your ego mm -hmm. story. I think it's interesting that somebody else was driving the car before you crashed and now you're driving the car. Yeah, oh, it's scary. Yeah, no, it's definitely very scary. It was a definite nightmare. I'm 
like it wasn't wasn't like oh I'm aware that this is a spiritual message and I'm going yeah. to <laughs> 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 addict here yeah that's good I mean I think well we try in a sense like you were going to come here and everything and it's almost like you want to be aware of one of your core you know issues or prayers and this is how you yeah you became aware of that for sharing that early on mm-hmm. they can be used for you then for that. Yeah. it's beautiful too because these are with Jimmy's sharing as well these are examples of really what the awakening process is it's, it's the darkness to light and David would call the Course of course Miracles as the rotor rooter mm-hmm. And we can't literally go anywhere unless we do this step. You know, it's it is it is like the it is the process. So it's beautiful to see it as a theme of starting to emerge. And yeah, I think a lot of people are afraid to so, discuss what get rid of what they're afraid of. You know? Yeah, they keep that inside, and you know, mm-hmm. they face it instead of sharing it. You it's know, just you know, not. Just talk, actually. <laughs> just do do like she did. She just <laughs> ask. Mm-hmm. So. Is that all right? <laughs> yes, it's all right. Yeah. Um, I uh, <coughs> am re- retired due to illness, and I'm volunteering. And it's like I have too much time alone. So I've been reading, and now I'm starting with the course again. And is that purposeful for me to be in the scenario of having so much time alone? Mm-hmm. You know, I try to read and, and do the willingly do the do the work. <laughs> right. It sounds like you're calling for more interaction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that you should stay open to something coming in that would give you more interaction with others and right, right. because that's the situation when you can practice everything you read exactly, you know? exactly. So, so I am stepping out I'm going to be for hopefully working with patients you know visiting them in their homes and stuff to have that interaction but obviously it's what my My ego keeps fighting against mm-hmm. that time, you know. Yeah. Picking on me, so I'm stopping that. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's why we moved into community, because mm-hmm. we needed some structure for our minds to. Right. Because we, we didn't want to be in the hamster wheel anymore, mm-hmm. you know, of the, yeah. of the world. and But also, we're not ready to have all the time in the world to. Try to be guided, because so so that's why we moved into community to have some structure and some support mm-hmm. in, and some functions, some yeah. helpful things to do, and yeah. and so I think it's. Um, I mean, it could even be that you here in your group, maybe you start to have more connection with each other during the week, mm-hmm. not just once a week when you meet, but you may meet three times a week, or you know have some more time together where you yeah, right. collaborate or something. Yeah, I have this test in my life. It's a roommate who, <coughs> and I've, excuse me, I've got other roommates who haven't paid and blah, 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 and she pays, but she is so um, 100 miles an hour mm-hmm. and busy as can be and doesn't really listen, you know, if I mm-hmm. say something, it immediately goes back to her, and she'll sit there and talk to herself to guide her through her own work, she's a nurse, and it's it's just like an added challenge. Right, that's probably not what you need. <laughs> Rather than I mean, being alone, you know, I have this other challenge, Right. I can, there's no way for me to communicate right. with that's her. Right, yeah. Yeah, so <coughs> that's why you need companions in purpose, you know, right. that, where you can have more some deepening Mm-hmm. together and yeah. yeah 
And that's why I started to go to A Course in Miracles because I had studied it before. Yeah. And um, yeah. I just wanted a little insight. Yeah. That. Yeah, it's good. And you, the practice is you you are with your one relationship with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And to keep practicing that one relationship when you are around right. others that are not in the purpose, you can still be. Right. You know and and be in your relationship with spirit and observe your world but right. um, yeah but it's certainly helpful to to have some mighty companions mm -hmm. and spend time with them and and we offer also in the we offer um, volunteer opportunities from home so many people sign up to volunteer from home yeah. and in that way they are like part of the community oh yeah that's right um, possible too. So we do have some exercises and practical mm -hmm. application ideas. I don't know what time you guys find. I guess would be uh, fairly intuitive in terms of lunch, but yeah, we, we could take a break and have lunch and then start. We can see are there any more, any more questions or thoughts or exposure? I have one. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. And it goes back to conversation about clarity and hearing guidance. So I understand that the static is always on our side. It's not on Holy Spirit's side. <laughs> can you talk a little bit about maybe when you move from the peripheral bio location to David, mm -hmm. how you knew that you were actually hearing from spirit? Because mm -hmm. the way I envision, the way I would like it, is if you've seen the Fidelity commercials, the green arrow that tells the people where to go, <laughs> like that's the way I envision wanting to be so clear mm -hmm. about the guidance mm -hmm. that I hear. Yeah and how you knew when it was actually Holy Spirit you were hearing from and kind of mm -hmm. when that clicked in mm -hmm. for you? Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've seen sometimes it's like you you go in a direction and you go, go, go in that direction. And you may start to have some doubts. Is this the direction? Is this? But you keep going until it becomes so obvious. Okay, this is not the direction sure. anymore I'm going to turn. So, so for me with uh, Parakis Iowa, yeah, I started the transcendental meditation, the CD practice, and and um, I had a very profound experience of the meditation when they taught me how to do those sutras, uh, and I went so deep with the meditation, um, and so I thought oh, this is it, this is gonna bring me to enlightenment because I went. I went out like from the body actually with with the meditation and it's an intricate system of the sutras in the transcendental in the TM city. So uh, so it was apparently spirit or something in me knew exactly how to do it. So I didn't need to bother my mind in the specific so I very deep and it turned out when I went so deep with the meditation, I didn't want to go to class because it was a class um, to go to, and and I was like, I don't need a class. I just I kn I know this. Mm -hmm. I can meditate at home, but I had to go to class because otherwise I would get expelled and not be able to stay for the whole year. Go into the golden dome with a thousand women, or two thousand women, and meditate. And two thousand men in the other dome. So, uh, so I, I had to go to class. So when I had this deep experience, and then the next day was class, I had to force myself to go, and, and I, I did force myself to go. And I shared in class what, what happened, how deep it went, and and the teacher got worried, and she said, "We need to check you, because uh, it's out of the ordinary." We need, Maharishi said, "We have to check everybody who's doing something different." out of the ordinary. 
even if it's good. <laughs> so she took me out in the room and she checked my meditation and she told me, meditate for five minutes and then I ask you those questions. And, and I told her, I, I don't need you to check me. I am good, this works. And she said, no, no, I have to check you. I, otherwise, you can't stay here. These are the rules. And I, I thought, I, I don't need, I don't need our rules. And I thought, I don't need Marish University. <laughs> And that was a big, uh, a big fear came up for me because mm. uh, also the headmaster said to me, it's, uh, this is a very established program, it's the Vedic system, it's thousands of years old and you should stay because you need a path, mm. you can't just go away and be on your own. And, and so it was a deep, deep fear came up for me and I, but I still felt very strong felt spirit, I need to stay with the Holy Spirit. I couldn't force myself to do her test and to be there, actually, and be graded, meditation graded, and mm. and uh, having to wear certain clothes. I, I was always wearing jeans, and and I couldn't wear jeans there. I had to, to dress up for Maharishi, because they had the altar and the fruit, and Maharishi wasn't there, but still had to dress up. And, all those rules <laughs> and I was like feeling clearly the spirit wouldn't have me do that and I didn't need all of that so um, so it became so obvious that I had to say no to it even though the fear was very fear came up strongly and um, but I still had to stay with the Holy Spirit and then I left and and then uh, David called me and said you're, you're welcome to Peace House. And and I thought, oh, I, I might go there. I thought, I, I don't know anything about the Peace House. I don't know much about David, and I don't know what he's doing there. I don't know what I would do in the Peace House. So in my mind, I imagined a big center, peaceful you know, retreat center or something. And, and I thought, that, that's probably good. <laughs> but uh, I didn't know what it was. Um, so it, what happened was, um, the lady that I stayed with, she sent me off because she was jealous because there was a man in the house that I had a good connection with and we mm -hmm. became friends and she f had a secret relationship with him that I didn't know about and she said to me, uh, you have to leave, I'm going to book your ticket. <laughs> and first I was like, then I got enraged at that, I was like, who are you to tell me, you know, uh, and then spirit was very clear and said to me, no, no, this is me. This is me helping you to leave because you have a next step um, to go to David. So it was... Was that just a... So here's what I'm trying to get at. The experience of that intuitive hit. Was that... Because the test of truth is pure peace. Right? Yeah. The Course tells us yeah. it will be peace. And if it's not that, yeah. it's not truth. Yeah. So was that... It was a little scary, so I wouldn't say that when it's pure peace, you know it's guidance. I knew it was guidance, but there was still some fear. Okay. So, yeah. Doesn't the Course teach us somewhere it says something about, you know, that it's guidance from the Holy Spirit, that if you do get confused about it, maybe you have two choices and you choose the one that less, the lesser of two evils, so to speak, the one that gives, the one you have less resistance to. Well, it depends, because I think there can be a pseudo-peace, too, like an ego peace. <laughs> um, so sometimes it can feel a scary to follow the spirit, but I used to practice to ask twice, or show me a sign, or make it really obvious so that I know and those prayers are usually heard and answered <laughs> because spirit wants us to I mean they're always heard and answered to the extent that we are ready to hear and um, we will hear and feel it and I think it's an excellent practice to, to practice guidance to get in touch with it is it a feeling of a yes or a no inside and 
and then take a step, even if you're not sure, just take a step and then, you know, then you see. And the doors close very clearly and obviously if it's a no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but maybe we have lunch <coughs> together now and we can just continue to talk and uh, during lunch and yeah. Okay, yeah, me, uh, Do you have any instructions? Um, no, it's just there, um, it's, it'll be just sandwiches. Sandwiches, yeah. yeah.